Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Aging with grace, or disgracefully, as Katie and I like to say, is our new weekly show because every week we write lots of articles, Grace's musings, and we get so much feedback. And I thought, you know what? Book clubs, we all get together and we have a discussion, we debate it and we talk about it, and we love to do that. So now we've got a weekly show where we pick a topic with you all and we'll talk about it. Plus, you can chat live with us, you can phone us, you can comment, and we'll pull as many of those comments and opinions through as we can. Um, finish at eight o'clock, so it's just a one hour conversation, chat with the amazing Katie and all of you, so welcome. Yeah, we're so pleased that you could join us tonight. But the main thing is, I think, is we're gonna start off the discussion but what we really want to see is you joining in. It's not just us, is it? We it's not you and I just having just a good old gossip, because well, we no, do a lot of I that. I was going to say, we could just talk for an hour, but it may not be as entertaining as if you join in with us, so please make sure that you do. Get involved in the chat. We've got moderators. We're going to look and see what you're doing and get you involved in the conversation too. Right, so today's topic, which you all voted on, is about dressing appropriately for your age. Should you, shouldn't you, where it comes from, the pressure that we should or whether we, sh we uh, shouldn't. So it's a really interesting topic. And for me, when I, wrote about, when I wrote about it, it was around Davina McCall at the age of 53 wearing this beautiful skimpy dress, big split, mm. you know, the white yeah. one, the big yep. split. And she got absolutely attacked by the press saying... You know, she shouldn't be wearing clothes like that. She's too old. Um, and she used this phrase, you know, you've got to be more demure as you mature. And she came back and she said, I'm not yeah. going to... There's no demure going on over here. And it just really prompted this conversation about dressing appropriately for your age. And what does that mean? Yeah. You know, what does it mean? What's appropriate for your age? What should you be wearing? What you shouldn't be wearing? Where does it come from? Who's guiding that to tell us what we should be wearing anyway? I don't actually know, is the <laughs> honest answer. I did actually start to do some research yesterday in preparation for today. I went on good old Google and had a look and the number of articles that came up, how to dress for your age. To be fair, it was in your 20s, in your 30s, in your, it wasn't just aimed at you know, the over 40s. But the amount of people that felt like they could tell us what we should be wearing at any age, I was like, I was, I was actually quite fascinated. What was reassuring is that a lot of the comments on a number of these posts were like, well, I can't even tell you what some of the comments were. They were quite rude, but as in, don't bloody tell us how to dress at any age. And so I actually thought, this is good because some of the posts were actually quite old and people were going, thank you very much for this information. I'm, I'm now 50 and was, was insecure on how to wear and, and what to wear. So it was more reassuring that the later posts, you've got a lot more people, a lot more vocal going, don't tell me what to wear. Yeah. So that was I think what's interesting is a dressing appropriately for your age. There's been a lot of A-list celebrities who have really been attacked by the press. Helena Christensen you know, wore that beautiful yeah. lace bodice basque. Again, it's not appropriate. Put it away. Don't show off. They called it, didn't they say she looked like a madam? Yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was so she offensive. It on. was so offensive. And I was thinking about that and it's like, well, what does dressing appropriately mean then? Right? So it's, mm. for me, it's complete personal taste. It's what's right for you. But dressing appropriately for me is for your body shape, what, yeah. for your lifestyle, what makes you feel confident, you know. And I love, all, do you remember the Trini and Susanna? Yes. They were brilliant at saying, if you're this shape, this works really well for you, you want to enhance certain parts of your body, you want to hide. All of that stuff isn't about dressing appropriately, it's about dressing confidently for and for yeah. you. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't, inappropriately wear certain things so you know if you're over the age of 50 you can't wear shorts can't wear short skirt. I read that yesterday Wait, so, some, someone wrote if you're over the age of 40 don't wear anything above the knee and I live my life in shorts as soon as the weather is good enough I'm in shorts and I just I 
And shorts suit your body shape yeah. Yeah, and I'm suit your lifestyle. Yes. So yeah. that suiting your body, whether you're 20, 30, yeah. 40, 50. So if you're 60 and you've got an amazing shape that suits shorts, then keep wearing the shorts. Absolutely. I don't think there's... I don't think there are rules around what's appropriate and what isn't appropriate. Yeah. I do think, the one thing I will say, age appropriate, I do feel like your, your style, your style personality will change as Absolutely. you age. Absolutely, yeah. But not because of your age. Absolutely. Just because your lifestyle changes, maybe your job changes, maybe your body shape changes. And we all know that that can happen at certain times in our life. So... I do see no one saying it evolves. Yeah, exactly. And you change with it. And actually, what's interesting about that is I think to stay relevant, you want to switch up, you want to change up your style. So, not wearing the same things, you know, in your 30s or 40s, in your 50s, in your 60s. And I, I get a lot of women say, you know, if I go into Zara, there's all these items and they're quite fashionable and I'm not sure I can wear anything mm. that's fashionable or I couldn't wear ripped jeans. Don't talk to me about ripped jeans because my mother told me off when she saw me in a pair of ripped, ripped jeans. jeans. She never, ever forgave me. Not so much that it was because of my age. She didn't say, you're way too old to wear that. Yeah. It was because she said, it will give the impression that you can't even can afford, afford to buy jeans, jeans yes. without holes in them. What do you think it says about you? Which is a completely different story. But I think what's interesting is that fashion play and I think what's different about us as a generation we're into fashion mm. we're into clothes we like and if you take something like Zara the fashion style is quite blended so my 18 year old my 22 yeah. year old will buy items in Zara and I'll buy the same items mm -hmm. or we share them between us that would never have happened in my mother's generation. Can I just say, that was an article in the Daily Mail. Oh, was it? Yeah, yesterday when I was doing my research, there was an article <laughs> in the Daily Mail, and it was, mother wears same items of clothing as 20-year-old daughter. <gasps> oh, <gasps> shock <laughs> horror. Oh, my God. My 16-year-old is borrowing stuff out of my wardrobe. That's how times have changed. Yeah, and I think part of it is because we are more fashionable exactly. and fashion conscious, and that's great, isn't it? Yeah. Why... Why shouldn't we be that sort of uniform of, you know, beige slacks, the beige slacks and, and the, the twin set and the pearls? That's always my favourite. All favorite. the big chunky jewellery and dress yeah. it down. I just think times have changed Absolutely. and are changing. I one of the things that I did read yesterday was that um, the twenties, your twenties, are your time to experiment. But by the time you hit your forties, you must know your style. You must know exactly what you want. And I was like. Do you know what? That even that annoyed me because, um, yes, you know, after I had my daughter, which was in my thirties, I went through a bit of a frumpy time. Not by choice, just lifestyle. Relax. And, <laughs> and I, I was saying earlier, next was next to the gym, so I'd <laughs> pop into next and I'd buy a safe pair of trousers. And nothing wrong with next, by the way. But do you know what I mean? It was all very safe, safe. And it was actually when I hit my forties that I went. Oh, I've had enough of that now. That was fine. That was time. Yeah. Children were little, whatever. I don't want that. And I've actually experimented more in my 40s than I ever did in my 20s. Yeah, that's so a really good point, actually, because I've always loved fashion. I mean, I've always, ever since I was a teenager, and I have to tell you, Libby, my 22-year-old, is so into fashion. It's, she is her mother's daughter. And I've, it's always evolved, but what's really changed is I think I was a follower, not a victim, of a, f a follower of fashion. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was in the magazines, I wanted to do the same. And yeah. I think as I've aged, which is playing a little bit to your point, through my 40s, I started to dress more for me and my style. Yeah. And now into my 50s. I have a grace style, regardless of what's happening in the world mm. and what's in fashion and you know what's on the in the glossy magazines. But I've sort of almost curated my own style. Yeah. No, I get that. And I like to update it. Yeah. Which is interesting. So, if someone said, "What what's your what is your style?" I'm very much into floaty dresses, boho. Always have been. I love them. I find them comfortable. Which yeah. Going back to you having young children, comfort's really important. Yes. My yeah. twenty, you know. Early on in my 20s, it was like 
tie. tie I was going to say tie. Yeah, so it didn't Someone matter as long as it looked. Off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, none of that's going on. Comfort's <laughs> important. And dressing for my body shape, because my body shape is different. Yeah. Um, but I like to update it so you know here I am wearing trainers yes. as oh, you are me too and obviously there's going to be someone out there going oh no you're far too old yes. to wear trainers and of course when oh we're god not. no I if, look if someone banned trainers nowadays I'd be in trouble <laughs> I'd be barefoot especially after the last year don't put me in heels please oh my god my poor feet I, I've forgotten how to walk in heels so trainers I I put them with everything dresses trousers jeans pew, Yes. Yeah, so it's sort of style and comfort. I think comfort I love that, is important. But that's my favourite combination, you know. I love a real mix of something a bit glam, something a bit stylish, something that's got some tailoring maybe, but then you put it with an edge. You put it with yeah. your trainers, you put it with an oversized, ugly necklace. Or I like, and I really like edge, that mix and match. The sort of the edge or the accessory, that's where I think you can play with what's... In, trend. in more in fashion, yeah, more yes. in fashion because I, you know, the big f the fashion industry, sustainability, all that sort of stuff. So I wear, I buy items that I know I'm going to wear and wear and yeah. wear. But you can almost not modernise them, but you can dress them up in the season or what's on trend yeah. really, really easily, can't yeah. you? Yeah, because you, then you can inject some colour with with a bag or a pair of shoes or whatever. You yeah. don't have to go the whole hog of on trend from top to toe because that's so I you yeah. know what I do, what I'm really curious about is where they're outdated stereotypes aren't they mm -hmm. of what women at certain ages should look like and how they should behave and how sh they should dress what they can and what they can't do but I always wonder where did it come from because I read an article Related to fashion, but basically said, if you're over the age of 40, you shouldn't have long hair. Oh, I remember reading this. And I just thought, well, who, who says, who is determining that you can't have long yeah. hair? And, you know, you go onto Instagram now and there's gorgeous, amazing, you know, grey hair yes. models. And that would be, you know, you should never have long hair if you're over the age of yeah. 60 or with beautiful, long, grey locks. And I just think, well, where does it come from? Who is saying those things yeah. but um the helena christensen which was interesting when she wore that beautiful yes. lacy you know, corset yes. whatever it was yeah. it was alexandra shulman who was obviously the ex-editor-in-chief of vogue she was the one publicly who said put it away it, yeah. and criticized her yeah and I thought that was a female to female. Yeah, which is always my biggest problem. We should be our biggest supporters, and yet we're actually, we're the ones that often are the first to criticise another woman in what they're wearing. And that makes me really sad, especially now that I'm older. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've all been teen girls and all gone, well, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I was one of those. So it was like, oh gosh, you know, what's she wearing? Oh, wouldn't we seen dead in that, would you? Mm -hmm. But I'd like to think that now that I'm a mature woman, I'm not going to be so judgmental. And so for someone yeah. who's got such a, a massive um, um, presence, especially in fashion, being ex-Vogue, to come out and publicly criticise another woman, who, to be fair, I might not wear a basque, but that's because I haven't got the figure for it. Yeah, she looked, she looked amazing. amazing. Come on, she's but a little Christian. She looked amazing. It suited her. She carried it off. Exactly. And she looked phenomenal. And that's a good point, because instead of looking at it objectively rather than the criticism and it was really disparaging mm. but also looking at what it signified that actually it's a positive isn't it that there are women in their 50s who are making statements yeah. who are, who are doing things that push that stereotype push, yeah push the boundaries challenge the stereotype yeah so instead of making it a positive she made it a real gonna, negative i was going to say why couldn't she have said did you see helena last night Oh my God, she looked amazing. I wouldn't have worn it. In fact, I'm really jealous. I wouldn't look that good yeah. in that and see it, turn it on its head and be positive. Because I believe, didn't you say in your article that she then, the tables were turned on her yeah, and absolutely. then a whole host of women then turned on her and said, who are you to criticise Helena? And it's just, you know, I don't know. And where, where the stereotypes come from, I personally, I just think it's time. And I think it comes from a, a much more old-fashioned, possibly a much more even like Victorian time where 
you know, we were meant to be very demure and we were meant to be all covered and... But yeah, so maybe it's. Do you know what I mean? I think it literally comes from that long ago. Roles. Yeah, maybe potentially. You know, that's gone. And it's like once you've, I'm going to push this out here. But once you've sort of served your purpose, I'm saying it in this way. <laughs> I don't actually believe this, ladies. <laughs> Please, I'm I'm thinking from somebody else's point of view. Once you've served your purpose, so you've been young, you've been attractive, you've found your husband, your mate, whatever, you've produced your children. Yeah, procreate. Yes. So you. And this is what I mean by you've served your purpose. Mm. Now, just just fade into the background now. And, you know, because you don't need to find a mate anymore and you don't need to do this. So you can just withdraw a bit. Do you know, could, yeah. could you see that that's maybe where it Almost sort of it. started from? Um, you know, and that's not age appropriate because actually, you know, you shouldn't be looking sexy. You shouldn't be looking attractive. You shouldn't, you're vain if you're trying to look good at your age. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, maybe, because I guess, you know, from an evolutionary perspective, and even the sort of animal kingdom, you know, the role of the female is to attract, isn't it? Yeah. Attract a male mate, whereas, you know, the, the male part is to show prowess and to show that they're a good... And to continue to yeah. mate, potentially. And they can continue for a much longer than we can. But we always have this conversation, don't we, when we think of beauty or, you know, being sexy or valuable or vital. It's always associated with youth. And that's the other outdated stereo misconception that yeah. actually, you know, beauty is ageless. Absolutely. And we're just as valuable and just as vital into our 50s, 60s and 70s. But I do, I do think the world has changed and I think we're much more blended. So when I think about my mother, whether it was clothing or everything, she had, there were boxes. I was in this box and she was in that box. She mm. would never shop in any of the shops I went to or would wear any of the clothes that I went to. And she wanted me to shop in Marks and Spencers. Yeah. It's not like that now. Fashion is so blended and it, it crosses the, the age cosm. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, so, you know, you know like, like we said, Zara. Zara's yeah. perfect example. An yeah. item in Zara, you can get an 18 year old wearing it and you can have a 60 year old wearing it fabulously. Yeah. So it's different. Absolutely. Although I do believe, uh, and this was in a blog that I read yesterday, someone had the nerve to say, don't go shopping in those teen shops. <sighs> And I, wa I was like, can we just stop with it? I mean, it was a blogger. It was, you know, it wasn't the editor of Vogue. But I, I was like, yeah, why? And starting to great. But then on the post itself, you then did get women going. Yeah, you know. don't tell so me. So we are, we are standing up for ourselves nowadays. So we've yeah. got quite a lot of um, interesting comments coming through. So I think we should hand over to Nia and just see what other people... Because it is an interactive conversation. Yes, it's absolutely. not just you and I no. gassing between <laughs> us. So it'd be interesting to see what other people are saying. Of, you've got lots of enthusiastic ladies and they're kind of loving what you're saying. They're loving that you're chatting about this. Um, Sarah Shan says that people might be being negative about celebrities because they're just jealous. Yeah. So ah. Yeah, jealousy thing. Um, I actually did think that about um, that Vogue Hel editor. Yeah, but you said maybe. Well, you said you know. You she look at Helena nice Christ. About anyone. She's just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's Is she just not a nice person? No, she's, oh, okay she's then. She's always downbeat about a lot. Of okay. Things. Yeah. Uh, fair. Yeah. Um, Sh Sarah Shan says she also swaps clothing with her sixty-eight-year-old brother, which is. Oh, cool. I love yeah, that. That's cool. Um, there's lots of women who are kind of pro wearing what you want. A lot of them have kind of agreed with you that they've swapped their heels for trainers. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a few people in the <laughs> chat la, la, la. who yeah. are wearing their trainers. Um, and then Helen is in her 60s, and she says she loves experimenting with style, even in her 60s, and Absolutely. it gives her a creative outlet. Um, let's see what else we have. To be fair, just to go along with Helen, mm. um, you've only got to go on Instagram nowadays. And there's so many people who are blogging their, their style, their daily style, their outfit of the day. And the age range now are literally from, you know, teens to, well, I have like, plus. Yes. And so 
obviously it is a it's a, it's something we love we love that creative outlet i'm yeah. with helen and it's yeah. really interesting you know julie t says andy mcdowell looks amazing in camps yeah. she's got her like gray hair she's yeah on the red she carpet. looks phenomenal didn't she yeah absolutely phenomenal but when you looked at the press coverage yes they all commented on how amazing she looked with gray hair for I was like, her age for her thing. age <laughs> and i was like no she looks amazing yeah. full stop but the um What's because we all loved fashion. Most young girls and women love fashion, and it's sort of like you said, you get to a certain age and then you just think, Oh, I'm not going to bother anymore. Yeah. And I think what's different now is we do bother because we still want to look good, we do it for ourselves, mm. we care. And why, sh why shouldn't we? we why should we should. write ourselves off just because society wants to say, If you're over 50, you're over the hill, and that's yeah. done? And it's like, No. And actually, my mum, bless her, even though her style was very different, um, she still made an effort into her 80s. Yeah. You know, she still yeah. wore a little bit of makeup. She still, she still dyed her hair, which is another big conversation. Do you <laughs> go grey? Don't you go grey? That whole debate. But she still cared about her appearance. Yes, yeah, and I... Absolutely. Maybe I'm her mother's daughter, my mother's yes. daughter. But she had a sense of pride. Yeah. And I think it's it's... Your own self-care. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'm just talking about that, of self-care. I, I didn't appreciate that until now, after a year of lockdown. Mm. And I spent, like many of us, I, I spent a lot of time in elasticated waist trousers. <laughs> I didn't wear any makeup. I didn't really do my hair. I wasn't working. I wasn't going out. And for a while there, I thought it was magnificent. Yeah. I reveled in the freedom of not really caring. I yeah, really, yeah. really enjoyed it. And I'd see people on Instagram saying, no, it's self-care, dress up, just because you're not going, do it. And I was going, no, I'm loving this. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving letting myself go, this is amazing. And then about March this year, I realised my self-esteem had absolutely plummeted. I realised that confidence in myself had absolutely plummeted. That's so and, interesting. And that was because I'd essentially spent a whole year don't get me wrong, if I had to take a photo or I had to record a video yeah. for someone or do something like that or go on Instagram, do an Instagram live, there I was, putting my, putting my makeup on, doing my hair. Um, but it had had a, a year's worth of effect on my self-esteem and my confidence. So since March, I've worked really hard. I've actually worked with a personal stylist. Have you? Yeah, I really did. That, that is wonderful. If we've got time, I'll tell you about that at another time. Um, it has really improved my confidence and I'm starting to make more of an effort. I don't wear a full face makeup every day, but I, I tend to put a bit on. I'm making more of an effort with my clothes, with my accessories. I've bought new, a few new belts and just little things like that, just to update what I've already got. And immediately I'm starting to feel better. So to, to just tie that back to what you were saying, we should make that effort with ourselves. It is not selfish. It's a confidence. It's, it's a conf I always absolutely. say this, makeup is the confidence that you wear on your face, yeah. clothing. And it is absolute. Well, I always tell this story. You know when you get ready to go out? We all get ready to go out. We've done our hair. We've put some makeup on. We've got a new outfit on. And you you know that feeling when you look yes. in the mirror and you go, oh, yeah, this is. And I you're like what I see. It and I like <laughs> what I see. You are no different the person you were two hours before that. You're yeah. the same person. With the same problems, the same issues. But it gives you issues. that confidence yeah. boost. And I just think it's out there, it's available. So why wouldn't you give yes. that gift to yourself? Yeah. And it makes a massive difference. Yeah. Fashion, you know, I do it from the makeup perspective, but fashion, when you buy something new, you love wearing it mm. and you just, you dress it up, you dress it down. And I just think sometimes we probably have times in our life and this happens at all different times in our life, mm. whether it's because we have children, whether it's because we go through an illness, whether it's we go through a divorce, whether we go through the menopause, whatever it is, I think we have times where we sort of forget yeah. that we can lose. I, d I don't like saying I felt, felt lost, but do you know what I mean? We sort of lose our way just that little bit, yeah. which is fine because life, whatever's going on in our life at the time is a bit more important and we have to give that all the energy rather than flouncing around with our brand new blouse or whatever but I think once your life gets that stability again then I think it's 100% important that we should yeah, go or, right or I think 
what does happen, you know, women are, whether you have children or not, we are carers, we're nurturers, yeah. we create happy teams, we create homes, we create, we spend a lot of time and energy caring and giving, 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 don't we? Yeah. But it's very easy to forget yourself Absolutely. in the process. And there isn't time. Some days there just isn't time, you know, especially if you've got young children or you're caring for a, an elderly parent or whatever. It's not a priority. That's what I mean, which is why I think it's OK to lose it temporarily. Yeah. But then, I mean, if you've got time yeah, to do it every day. Then it's if yeah. it's about time. I know. If it takes time. Uh, the more time, I'm talking, the more I know, I'm talking myself I'm gonna out talk of you it. Out yeah. for this. <laughs> if it takes one minute to get dressed. Yeah. Right. It takes you one minute to get dressed in, you know, You're slouchy. In, yes. And it takes bottoms. the same minute. And I'd actually say that's why I love dresses. I, I am a dresser-holic because they're the easiest things and the quickest thing to get dressed. You pick it up and you throw it on. Yeah. You don't have to worry about if I'm wearing these oh, trousers, no, what am I going to... And you don't even have to shave your legs because <laughs> they're long. But, you know, it's like... So in that one minute, you can throw on something that's going to give you that boost. Yeah. And it's the same with makeup. You know, if you can brush your teeth, you can put on two bits of makeup yeah. so quickly. This but is what I'm power, trying to do now. Yeah. The power, the, the boost that it gives you is, is so big yes. that I don't... And that's why I'm passionate, passionate. And I had big conversations during lockdown about, you know, well, I only wear makeup when I go out and yeah. I'm not bothering a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so passionate, wear a little bit of makeup. So, you know, I always say this, if you... You know, you're, you're tired and you're exhausted and you wake up and you look in the mirror and you look it. I mean, who wants to look tired and exhausted? The good news is you don't have to look it. You might feel it. Yeah. And it is absolutely proven. If you look good on the outside, you feel, you feel it yeah. on the inside. I am it's testament a to that right boost. now. I, I, I was arguing against it. I know, and I've talked you out of it. And I have now talked myself <laughs> back into it because that's exactly what I've gone through in the last few months. I absolutely 100% agree. Like, even if it's just five minutes, I put some concealer around my, my dark eyes, I put some mascara to wake up my eyes, and I put some... And that's it. ...of this on to wake, yeah. literally wake my face up. Eight, Eight hours boom. sleep in Woo! a bottle. There we go. And, and it may... Some days I think it's probably just psychological. Do you know what I mean? I haven't done enough with my makeup to, to completely transform my face, but I've made, I've done enough to make myself feel better. Yeah. And you, I mean, the thing is about makeup that's trans, transformational, a little bit of cover up, a little bit of concealer, a little bit of, you know, foundation, just to even out the skin tone will make a difference. Yeah. And then, as you said, you know, our blush or a little bit of blusher that gives that color, healthy flush of the cheeks makes a difference it yeah. does transform you don't have mm. to do a full yeah makeup but the interesting thing about you know fashion because it extends into all the other areas you know accessories or you know what's age appropriate and I was thinking I was I was thinking about you know am I too old to have three piercings you know am I too old to I have two yeah and I've only done these in the last few years so I I had one ear piercing Right the way until I was 46, and now I've got five. Yeah, but that's <laughs> exactly the same. I did all my piercings in my 50. Um, I had a tattoo when I was 51. And what was hilarious is, you know, my girls, they were like, oh, what do you mean you're having a tattoo? And then they went, are you having a midlife crisis? Yes. No, yeah. I'm not having a midlife crisis. It's just that I'm, I've always wanted a tattoo. Yes. And I, you know, part of me thinks... It's the confidence. I probably didn't have the confidence because I'd be worried about what pe people judgment, would think. What people would think and the judgment. And I think that's one thing that comes with age is you do not care about what other people think. So you form, you become more confident yeah. in yourself and the choices that you make. And then that plays out to fashion. So, you know, it, there's such an amazing opportunity to just yeah. find your own style. It's interesting that you use the stylist yeah. to help you and I, I I think style changes because yeah. lifestyle changes life changes um but yeah I think it comes down isn't it I still love that I love the Davina McCall you know there's no demure happening here yeah. and I'm like yeah I yes. love you yeah yeah because I, I mean I'm I'm five foot nine and um you know I'm I'm lucky in that I've I've always loved being tall 
And I think because my dad always made me stand up and shoulders back and not, not slouching. But um, I think there was a time where I sort of, probably in my teens, I'd be a bit, yeah. you know, because I was taller than a lot of people around me. Um, and it's a shame, really, isn't it, that sometimes it does take us yeah, so sure. long to actually go, actually... This is who I am, and I'm proud. Um, I think we're just much more insecure. We're much more wanting to fit in when you're younger. You want to, which is interesting, because as much as we're saying, you know, we sort of, we're quite strong in, in who we are. We don't care about what other people think. You know, what you see is what I you still get. Do. I still do. Yeah, a little bit. I but do in what certain areas of my life. I actually put this on a post yesterday where... I want to get to that point where I'm like, stuff you. I don't care. I am exactly mm. who I am, and I don't care what you think. It's a work in progress. Yeah. And in certain areas of my life, I've got it. You know, I'm prepared to be daft in front of people. I will embarrass yeah. my teenagers in front of people. But certain areas, I still really care. And I'm hoping that over the next few years, I can just shed those, the last remaining I do th layers. I do think there is that transition. and um, There are so many positives, but... I still feel ageing, we, we're an ageist society mm -hmm. and Absolutely. there's a lot of negative and a lot of outdated stereotypes and misconceptions about middle age and I always say middle age is not a dirty word yeah. and we're just as attractive, just as beautiful, just as relevant. Yeah. So it's funny because at one level we're more confident mm -hmm. but at other levels we feel this pressure. Yeah to look younger, to be younger, and then we get into the whole anti-aging and yes, all the rest of it. That's another discussion that will be coming up. <laughs> yeah, for Because sure. that's definitely my little bugbear, as we know. Um, it's funny because even the words middle age worry some people because I'm always banging on about middle age and midlife women and from this positive point of view, da 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 and this is a great thing. And I've had people send me private messages. Hang on, don't go, use the word. Don't, don't use, you're putting people off. You shouldn't use middle age. Absolutely. And you shouldn't use midlife. And I'm like, but, but why? I'm really proud of where yeah. I am because I'm happier now than I've ever been. I would not, if you could wave that magic wand, I would not go back to my 20s. Mm. Or I probably might some days for my skin, but I wouldn't ever leave my brain behind. Yeah. I would want to go back with the hindsight and the knowledge that I've gained over the years. So I think it's really weird. And like someone said to me the other but day... it's the connotations it is, of it is the that. word. Because one of the very first articles I wrote was about the whole anti-age, pro-age thing. And I was like, I am middle-aged. And when I wrote it, when I said, in you know, on paper, I am middle-aged... Mm -hmm. I went on to say, I don't, that word is so negative yeah. to me. It's making me feel negative. It's just had, and I thought, technically, the word is just a word. Yeah. But it is the connotations around that word exactly. that make it negative, yeah. which is why we use words like midlife and all this sort of stuff. But it, it's still this, we are middle aged. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I'm always saying it's about wearing it loudly and, and proud, proudly exactly. and celebrating it. And, you know, S someone apologised the other day for asking me my age. And I went, don't apologise, because I really have this thing that as women, we shouldn't hide our age. Absolutely. We sh because we've all been, you never ask a woman her age. Yeah. A man, you're allowed, that's fine. You never ask a woman her age. Why? Because she, she's meant to stay at 26 for the rest of her life. What? No, we don't. We age. There's no stopping it. There's no getting over it. So if we, let's all be proud of where we are. Obviously, with your campaign, with your exhibition, you know. Yeah, it's about bearing your age in and your being face. positive. Yeah. But, you know, I've had, you know, a few women um, who love it, absolutely love it. But they said, I don't want to do that because age doesn't define me. Mm. And by virtue of the fact that I'm holding up a piece of paper bearing my age and something positive about it, I'm talking, I'm making it an issue. And I, and I really thought about that. And I thought, you know what? Age shouldn't define you. But where we are today, yeah. it, it sort does, of does. And we have to get that conversation out. Yeah. You know, it's not a, middle age is not a dirty word. And we have to make it a positive. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it is interesting. And I think language, and I always say, if we want to change the way we think and feel 
about aging, we have to change the conversation. Yeah. And we need, you know, that takes us into well, what is the conversation out there when you look at marketing and you look at big brands and all that sort of stuff. You know, they're using language like anti-aging, anti-wrinkle, anti-anti-anti, or they're not using, we've had this conversation mm. privately before, you know, mature models aren't, yeah. rep aren't, aren't represented. Even That's ha changing. It is, but even like, um, and I had this conversation with, with a fellow mature model yesterday, and she said, if you go on many model agents' Instagram pages, mm. you will only see their younger models on their Instagram <laughs> page. And yet they all have a massive board of classic models, but oh. they won't feature so much. And the same, um, again, with, um, this was with a clothing manufacturer. And she said, they will often not use older models, even if it's their target market. Not because it's aspirational, but because they don't want to be labelled mm an older brand so they oh. use younger women to model the clothes but yeah anyway. and the brands that do really well are the brands that cover the just, just the be diverse the diverse and are inclusive and the spectrum absolutely and i talk a lot about zara and i know they're high street and they're they are f sort of fashion but i've got zara things you know yes. that i've i've used for years but what i love about it is it's fashion and it's style regardless of your age yeah and you can get a 60 70 80 year old wearing an item from zara it's just as you can an 18 22 year old and look amazing i do have one issue with zara so if you're listening yeah <laughs> is their sizing yeah it's not inclusive and that is an issue for me but that's another, another conversation another and also that their models i don't think i have seen yet um an older model i have on mango of course a yeah, similar yeah. sort of brand i have on mango so but as we are coming i'm not going to say at the end yet but we're approaching the end so i think it might be a good time to go back to the chat yeah and to see think and see what's going on over in the chat so lots more ladies have been writing in and it's been a real mix of comments. Um, Ria said something really, really sweet. She said that she's way more confident in who she is at a late, later age. I thought that was quite nice, sweet yeah. thing to say. No, it's lovely to hear. Um, Zahida says, I'm proud of the way I look and the way I feel later in life. Um, she also asked questions. She said, what's your opinion on women who say they don't need to boost their confidence by wearing makeup? Ah, lucky then. Great. Yes, yes. <laughs> brilliant. Great. Yes. This is this is choice, in my opinion. Well, co see, yeah. confidence is personal, isn't it? So, mm. you know, for me, if you look in the mirror and you embrace everything about you and you're confident, happy yeah. days. Yeah. Happy That's days. Wonderful. Because that <laughs> is where we all want to be. But most women I've ever met, and especially most women into their 40s and into their 50s, they've got a, a more, a, this sort of stronger sense of self and their opinion, but this whole anti-aging thing, this desire of to, to look younger is a confidence boost. Mm -hmm. a co it knocks it your knocks, confidence, knocks, you. knocks your confidence. And then as you get slightly into menopause, that is a big, massive, you know, it's like someone's taking you out at the knees. So, um, I think if you're struggling a little bit with confidence, makeup, fashion, hair, yeah. jewellery is a bit of a boost. Yeah. And if you don't need it, happy, Wonderful. happy day. That's yeah. quite interesting. That leads into what Victoria G was saying. She said that some women are scared to be seen and it's a bit of a confidence issue. And a few women out there kind of want to hide and not be seen. And, but again, yeah. I do think that's personal choice. And as long as they are happy in that time of their life where maybe they're not feeling their most confident and they're happy to just back off a little bit that's absolutely fine we're not sitting here going you must put your makeup on and you must wear your it's it's personal choice i i yeah. was telling my story because i felt my confidence had been knocked and i wasn't i wasn't happy with my confidence being knocked so i've but gone I out of my way to build it back but if you're happy but I think, if, I think if we looked at levels of confidence and levels of happiness, I think they're probably quite interlinked. Because I have days where I not be confident. I mean, that, that's another amazing co uh, like conversation we should have around like, imposter syndrome. Mm. How many women 
have imposter syndrome. Don't we all? That is a play on a lack of confidence mm. and belief and value in yourself. So I think happiness and confidence are quite Absolutely. quite linked. Yeah, because when when my confidence and my self-esteem earlier this down. year was low, my happiness went down, which is why I wasn't prepared to carry on. I wanted mm. to make an effort to build everything back up. But it's interesting what Victoria um, G said about being maybe some women don't want to be seen. Mm. She so actually said she's been busier than ever as a stylist after lockdown, which kind of ties into how you were maybe oh, how, yeah, how yeah. you yeah. wanted to feel better after being in lockdown well, and wearing. Funnily enough, um, my story was picked up as an article um, for for a, an online magazine, and they featured me and my the personal stylist and two other women who were, um, had done their own version of a similar thing mm. to boost their confidence after lockdown. So I'm not surprised if stylists are super busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I mean, if you think about none of us have ever experienced in our lifetime no. lockdown, and it's, it has, I think, impacted every single one of us in some way negatively. Yeah. It was hard, it was stressful. It, and I think there has been... A re-evaluation. You oh, re-evaluate, but re-evaluate but you where you I am in my life. You re-evaluate your life, yeah. your values, what's important, what you, all your dreams, your ambitions, your aspirations. There is that sort of re-evaluation, realignment, and I think when you come out of that, you're sort of. So I get that. Yes. The styling side, and obviously now, as we're opening society again, you might be going back to work or you're socialising. So much has changed, yeah. like work, clothing in the workplace, or you're used to. I mean, that was the one thing I used to live in jeans. I love jeans, yeah. and I dress jeans up and dress. Now I just I don't like wearing them. I find them uncomfortable. Yeah. So I don't know if unless you know, it's really yeah, exactly. these little differences. Yeah. So I quite like that. Um, and then we've had kind of a few comments like. You know, if you are judged, women can be each other's worst enemy. Absolutely. And totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. And I don't... And Mandy says, you know, it's often the women who are kind of judging each other and it's really annoying because we mm. should all be embracing each other. Exactly. I totally agree with that. And I don't know why why women judge mm. other women. I mean, we talked a little bit, it's, you know, Alexander Sean, you know, is it jealousy? But, you know, I do, Helena I have to Christus, say, uh, there was it, another at times one. it is insecurity and jealousy of the person who's but doing the judgment. But I think there can be a, a soft jealousy because actually the, um, Helena Christensen, but, um, oh, I've forgotten her name. This is menopause fault. <laughs> um, Friends, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Rachel. So when she turned 50, you yeah. can't remember. Jennifer either. Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> got there. Yeah, Woo! we got there. This is what happened. <laughs> so this is real. Um, when she turned 50, she did a photo shoot and she literally was pretty naked, bar a little sort of crop top and shorts. She looked, and they weren't photoshopped, yeah. she looked amazing. Her body, her figure, she just looked phenomenal. And I was like, oh, look at her, bitch. Yeah. I don't look like that with my cellulite on my backside. And, but it was a sort of jealousy. But, I but was, you admired her. I admired her. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? You, d you can, so do it. Good for you. You're pushing the boundaries. And I found it positive. Yes. But that once again, there was some press and some comments and like, oh, put it away. No, but that, like, that is their own jealousy because we actually had a conversation here just literally an hour ago something can trigger your jealousy and your insecurity and some people will lash out at the source of that jealousy or insecurity that's the wrong thing to do what you need to do is address it yourself and go yeah, okay, okay that's made me feel jealous that's made me feel insecure mm. but then work on but that but you certainly don't lash out on the person that's not their fault you know, just because yeah. they look amazing you or they're skinnier or they've got bigger boobs which is always my <laughs> issue you know <laughs> Whatever it is, we've all got, every single person on this planet has, has an insecurity and a jealousy. Yeah, because the insecurity makes you feel bad about yourself and yeah. then you envy or are jealous. Yeah. But with all of that comes a responsibility. We all have a responsibility in the way that we interact with other people, what we say, how it's going to land. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel it's irresponsible, and especially public figures yeah. like journalists who are attacking and... 
I don't know. It's it's not. Ac- I find it not acceptable, Absolutely. and I think we should find the positive because. You know, Helena Christensen wearing that. She's pushed the boundaries. She's owning it. She's getting the conversation going. Yeah. And actually, it's a positive, isn't it? For it's a posi- and for me, it was inspirational. I, I wouldn't do it. I probably wouldn't have the confidence to do it. But that doesn't mean I'm not embracing the positive of what she's done. Exactly. In that, we are not going to like everything that everyone wears all the time yeah regardless of age you know it might be my 16 year old daughter it might be my 78 year old mom i might not like what what they wear but their age is irrelevant Absolutely. but someone like helena someone who does push those boundaries i don't want to wear a basque i don't have the figure for it but it then means it's a tiny little step between like do you know i'm trying to say open the doors yeah to being a bit more adventurous. It's not going to be yeah. wearing a basque. It might just be wearing a shorter skirt. It might be dyeing my hair bright red. But mm. everyone who just pushes those boundaries, just that little bit more to show that you, you're over 50, you don't have to wear, I'm, I was, was going to say beige slacks. I'm wearing beige slacks. But do you know what I mean? You are. <laughs> you don't have to wear the beige <laughs> slacks and the twin set and the pearls. You know, and I, I congratulate anyone who just pushes those... And I, I think that's right. So, you know, hate what I'm wearing, but not because of my age. So bit. the whole, yeah. you know, th- and I think that's how I ended my yes, article, wasn't did. it? The yeah. whole thing about wearing a basque. Is it appropriate to wear a basque in your 20s or 30s? Yeah. And depending on the environment. So if it's appropriate 20, let's say it is, mm-hmm. and in loads of situations it is, maybe if you're going to a party, why isn't it therefore appropriate yeah. in your 50s or 60s if you can carry it? carry it off and it suits you and it gives you that confidence boost so I think do you feel amazing when you put that basque on do you have you got that that glow does it make you dance well then go out and rock it that's 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 what I think if you if whatever you're wearing makes you laugh makes sorry not makes you laugh make gives you that glow you feel amazing that's it that's it yeah full stop that's my answer. That's my summary, ladies. Do you know, so. I'm totally, <laughs> totally with you. Yeah. Do you do what makes you confident? Rock it, own yeah. it. And, you and know, if it's, sorry, if it is the beige slacks, the twin set and the pearls, and that's what makes your heart sing and puts a smile on your face, then go out and rock that too. I'm not insulting anyone wearing the beige slacks and the twin and set. And actually, I have to tell you <laughs> this, I actually quite like that. Yeah. But the beige slacks for me would be really super flared. Be like really nice little round collars. Exactly. Col- and it can look absolutely stunning. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm not saying no one should wear the beige slacks. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. not what you wear, it's how you how wear, you wear it. it. Okay. So. so there we go. Yeah. So I think, are there any last, because we're getting close. Yeah. Yeah, just to end off with some nice positive comments. Um, Sahida also had a second piercing, only just recently. Did she? Yay. Yay. Right Sina, you'll have three Woo. soon. And it's great. You get to buy more earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. There's lots of kind of comments. There's lots of Zara love out there. Lots yeah. of people who are commenting about how much they love Zara too. And this is a lovely last comment to end on from Daisy May. She says, I'm loving a short dress with shorts under. She loves it. And she says she's fitter in her 50s than she was in her 20s. Yes. Nice. Yeah, and that actually is another point. Because yeah. I think a lot of us, I certainly... I've always been into exercise, but mm. when I turned 50, I really upped it because mm. I I want to be fit yeah. and strong. Yeah. And when they talk about menopause, they talk about osteoporosis yeah, your bones and your and bones. And, and yeah. it's like you've got to do resistance and weight. And now I'm so, yeah, I'm so <laughs> into it because I want to be fit and I want to be strong that... You know, when I'm 80 and when I'm 90, yeah. you, you know, I'm climbing Everest. Exactly. And I've still got a pair of legs that I can wear those short skirts because I can. More importantly, <laughs> and it was funny because I never thought about this because like you, I'm very much into fitness um, more than ever, really. Yeah, Late 40s. Too. I am definitely fitter now than I have ever been in my life. Um, but even like, you know, squats and everyone goes, oh, why am I doing so many squats? And I, one PT once said, well, you know, when you're older and you've got to stand up and get down off the toilet or stand <laughs> up or get down off your bed you will thank me for doing all these squats because you're there going oh my god no more squats 
and their life skills. And the stronger yeah. that we can be as we get older. And the other, we're we starting are a brand living. new conversation here. I know we you really know are. are don't you and we're say? living older and we're, li yes. living, we're living longer. So you know what? We want to, we be, want to be in I the just, best shape. Exactly. And look our very best yeah. and feel our very best. Absolutely. So thank yep. you, everybody, for this conversation. Uh, we'll see you next week. Um, and but yeah, thanks for joining in, everyone who's made a comment, and we hope to see you back here very well very soon next week. Yeah, this time <laughs> next week. See Tell you your then. friends. All right, take.